don't want to fight you, Flash. I wouldn't want to fight me neither. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie bullies who got what they deserved. How many of you have ever felt personally victimized by Regina George? Would you consider you and the princess best friends? Um, I, I would definitely say that. I mean, we, we do everything together. We shop together, we get our hair done together. Okay, but I set the building on fire. For this list, we'll be looking at the bullies and movies who received a well-deserved comeuppance. We're not counting horror movies, so Carrie, for example, won't be included. Which movie bullies got the most deserved karma? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Fred O'Banion Dazed and Confused While there are plenty of lovable characters in Richard Linklater's classic high school comedy, Fred O'Banion is the one we only love to hate. Nice try, freshman. Tell you what, just for being such brave little kids, I'm only going to give Ishii a five licks. Portrayed by Ben Affleck in an early role, Fred is a complete menace who takes particular delight in paneling Mitch Kramer and his friends. But Mitch doesn't let Fred get away with it. He gets his revenge on this overgrown bully with the torrential downpour of white paint. Remember me, you pig? <laughs> the experience doesn't make Fred any less of a jerk, but it hopefully teaches him to think twice before messing with freshmen. Number 9. Flash Thompson Spider-Man If a movie bully was made in a lab, it would look a lot like Flash Thompson. Played by Joe Manganiello, with his spiky hair and general caveman-like demeanor, it doesn't take very long for audiences to root for the underdog, Peter Parker. <laughs> While discovering his new spidey skills in the school cafeteria, Peter accidentally hits Flash with a lunch tray. This sends the bully into an instant fit of rage and thus starting a fight he's completely unmatched for. You think you're pretty funny, don't you, freak? Flash, it was just an accident. My fist breaking your teeth, that's the accident. With great power comes great responsibility. But we can't deny how satisfying it is to see Peter get his revenge on Flash. <laughs> Number 8. Lana Thomas, The Princess Diaries Mandy Moore has a very sweet demeanor in both her acting roles and in her music. However, she also knows how to play a mean girl amazingly well. Um, there's a school rule that says nobody's allowed to wear hats in class, and I don't think anybody should be an exception to that rule, do you? In The Princess Diaries, she plays Lana, a cheerleader who often torments titular princess Mia Thermopolis. While Mia starts off as shy and awkward, as the film progresses, her confidence grows. Okay, now! This means she learns to stop putting up with Lana's abuse. Mia, you're such a freak! Yeah, yeah, I am. But you know what? Someday I just might grow out of that, but you, you will never stop being a jerk. Lana probably never enjoyed ice cream ever again after that. It's hard to believe that she and Tangled's Rapunzel share the same voice. Number 7. Sid, Toy Story Growing up, we all knew that one kid who didn't play nice with anyone, including their own toys. Why is that soldier strapped to an explosive device? That's why Sid. <laughs> sure is a hairy fella. No, no, that's Scud, you idiot. That is Sid. <laughs> In Pixar's very first feature film, they created this villain to a T. With his iconic skull t-shirt and arched eyebrows, Sid is like a punk rock singer mixed with a corrupt mad scientist. Anything he can do to his toys, he will, especially if it involves mutilating them beyond recognition or blowing them to kingdom come. Doctor, you've done it! Hannah! Jenny's all better now. <laughs> when Buzz's life is put at stake, Woody decides to teach Sid a lesson he'll never forget. Heck, we're sure he didn't forget it. It's beyond creepy. We certainly took better care of our toys after this one. We toys can see everything. So play nice. <laughs> Number 6. Regina George Mean Girls as the leader of the clique known as the Plastics, Regina George is the pettiest, most narcissistic kind of high school bully times a million. Homeschooled. That's really interesting. Thanks. You're like really pretty. Thank you. So you agree? What? 
You think you're really pretty. Played by Rachel McAdams in her star-making performance, Regina revels in being equally worshipped and feared by her classmates. After being deceived by new friend-turned-enemy Katie Heron, Regina enacts a revenge plot that actually kind of works. Little does she know, however, she's got another thing coming. Regina, enraged, storms out onto the street where she is hit by a school bus. You can take that fake apology and shove it right up your hairy <laughs> And that's how Regina George died. No, I'm totally kidding. But she did get hurt. It's also a sudden and complete shock both to the characters and the audience alike. Regina survives the accident, but it's still a well-earned case of karma against a delightfully unlikable character. Number 5. Clark. Goodwill Hunting. I don't, uh, what class did you, did you say that was? History. history. Yeah. Just history? It must have been a survey course then, huh? Yeah, it was. It was surveys. Not all bullies use their physique to intimidate. Some, like Clark, played by Scott William Winters, use their brains. However, he makes the mistake of trying to match wits with the genius janitor, Will Hunting. At a Boston bar, Clark, the arrogant Harvard graduate student, tries to belittle Will's best friend, Chucky, for his lack of history knowledge. His arrogance is soon cut down as Will exposes him as an intellectual fraud, merely recycling the thoughts of others. Wood drastically underestimates the impact Wood of social distinctions. Wood drastically underestimates the impact of social distinctions predicated upon wealth, especially inherited wealth. You got that from Vickers. Work in Essex County, page 98, right? Yeah, I read that too. You can tell he's wounded right down to the core, especially when Will gets the girl he's been pining after. Do you like apples? Do you like apples? Yeah. Well, I got a number. How do you like them apples? <laughs> number four, Colin Yon, Amelie. Amelie, portrayed by Audrey Tautu, is a sweet soul who only wants the best for people. But if you don't play nice, she won't either. C'est vrai que Lucien n'est peut-être pas un génie, mais Amélie l'aime bien. Elle aime sa façon délicate de saisir les endives, comme si c'était des objets précieux qu'il devait manipuler avec respect. C'est sa manière à lui de manifester son amour du travail bien fait. Non mais regardez, -le. on a l'impression qu'il est en train de recueillir un oiseau tombé du nid. When she sees grocer Colin Yon repeatedly mistreating one of his employees, Amélie decides to put some fear into his heart. Vous avez oublié vos clés. Oh une minute, la Mélie Mélo, hein. Fais pas bon se presser ces temps-ci. Tenez. Vous avez qu'à prendre exemple sur Lucien. Mais quand il bosse, il risque pas d'être flashé par le radar. Pas vrai? She does this by going into his home and pulling some dastardly pranks, like switching out his slippers for smaller ones and swapping his mother's speed dial for a psychiatric hotline. We don't condone gaslighting, but we can't say we blame Amelie for stooping to the level she does. Her measures work. After her schemes, Colignon no longer bullies his assistant. Number 3. Inatech. Office Space. In this case, it's not one bully who's thwarted, so much as it is an entire company. In Mike Judge's beloved workplace comedy, the uncaring software company Inatech is practically asking for comeuppance. I'm also going to need you to go ahead and come in on Sunday, too, okay? We uh, lost some people this week, and uh, we need to sort of play catch-up. Thanks. It comes in the form of Milton, a mild-mannered employee played by all-time great character actor Stephen Root. He's shooed into the basement, has his salary payments cut, and is all around mistreated by Inatech's vice president. Since you're down here, it would be really great if you could just sort of take care of the cockroach problem we've been having in here. But it's when his cherished red stapler is confiscated that Milton finally snaps. Great. While we don't see who set fire to the Inatech building, we definitely understand who did it, especially when Milton ends up on the sunny beaches of Mexico by the end of the film. Hopefully he found a better company to work for. I asked for a Mai Tai and they brought me a pina colada and I said no salt, no salt for the margarita but it had salt on it. Number 2. Johnny Lawrence, The Karate Kid At the start of this treasured martial arts movie, Daniel LaRusso is the archetypal underdog, unable to stand up for himself against Johnny Lawrence and the rest of Cobra Kai. Okay man, now we're even up. No, no, During a Halloween night pursuit, Johnny and his gang capture Daniel and start to wail on him. That is until handyman Mr. Miyagi hand delivers some retribution. <laughs> the 
this serves as the perfect introduction to the world of karate. Later, Daniel and Johnny cross paths again in the All-Valley Karate Championships, but this time, our hero is far better prepared. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Biff Tannen – Back to the Future It isn't just the expert mixing of sci-fi and comedy that makes Back to the Future such a classic, it's also how expertly it gets us to root for and against different characters. Biff Tannen is an unrepentant bully both as a high schooler and as an adult. Can I assume that your uh, insurance is going to pay for the damage? Well, my insurance? It's your car! Your insurance should pay for it. I, I want to know who's going to pay for this. I spilled beer all over when that car smashed into me. Who's going to pay my cleaning bill? When Marty McFly goes back to 1955 and accidentally derails his parents' first meeting, he's desperate to make sure his parents fall in love again, you know, so he can continue existing. When Biff tries to assault Marty's mom, Lorraine, Marty's father, George, won't stand for it. Well, he stands, but Biff sure doesn't. <laughs> No matter how many times we watch it, we are always thrilled when Biff is hit by the fists of justice. Literally. Now, Biff, don't con me. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. McFly. I, I meant I was just starting on the second go. <laughs> yeah, Biff, what a character. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.